Hi everyone, my name is Sarah Mari. I'm one of the librarians at Portland Public Library in Portland, Maine, and I'm here today to celebrate Black History Month. Now, some of you might be wondering, why do we have Black History Month and what is it all about? Well, Black History Month is all about celebrating the history of Black people in the United States. The reason why we have Black History Month is not because this is the only month that we talk about Black people. Of course not. We talk about Black people all year round, just like we talk about all different types of people all year round. But the truth is, in our country, there have been a lot of times that the history of Black people hasn't been shown in the same way that the history of other people. You have maybe haven't learned about it as much in school or you haven't seen as many movies about it or um, even books on the shelf about it. And so when February comes around every year, we pay special attention to the stories of black people in our history and our present so that in the future, everyone knows about black history. So because of that, this month, we're going to be doing one picture book biography every single day of Black History Month. And we're gonna start with the very first one today of Audrey Faye Hendricks. Audrey Faye Hendricks was a young civil rights activist who um, marched. So we're gonna learn all about her. This book, The Youngest Marcher, the story of Audrey Faye Hendricks, a young civil rights activist, is by Cynthia Levinson and it is illustrated by Vanessa Brantley Newton. This book was published by Anthem Books for Young Readers. Whenever Mike flew into town, Audrey and her mama cooked. Barbecue ribs, stewed greens, sweet potato souffle, and Audrey's favorite, hot rolls baptized in butter. Other folks knew Mike as Martin or Dr. King. The Hendrickses used his nickname. They did it the same with all the other ministers too. Fred Shuttlesworth and Jim Bevel. After Mike blessed the feast, Mama expected Audrey to keep still during supper. But when the grown-ups talked about wiping out the segregation laws that kept black and white people apart in Birmingham, she just had to speak up. Audrey intended to go places and do things just like anybody. I want to eat my ice cream inside Newberry. I want to sit downstairs at the Alabama. I don't want hand-me-down school books. But stools at the counter, plush movie theater seats, books so fresh that they crackle when you open them, those were for white children. Hush, hissed Mama. Nine-year-old children should not speak in front of company, especially ministers like Mike, Fred, and Jim, who are bringing dreams of justice. Audrey knew all about segregation. She knew to pay the bus driver at the front of the bus and then step off and walk around to the back door. Drink from the fountain with the dirty bowl and the warm water. Front row seats, cool waters, uh, use a freight elevator at the department store down, downtown. Front row seats, cool water, and elevators with white glove operators. The law said that those were for white folks. Every Monday night, Audrey and her mama and daddy and her aunts and uncles and cousins joined neighbors and friends at Fred's Church for Worship, Fellowship, and Testimony. She sang and swayed along with the movement choir, her voice spirited and spiritual. Black and white together, we shall overcome. For once, she didn't have to keep still. Then came the testimonies. White store owners won't hire me. Ku Kluxers chased me. Policemen called me names. The hateful story made Audrey squirm. She tried to tell her mama that's not right. Shh, how could her mama expect her to hush? But what she could, could she do? When Mike visited Fred's church, thousands of people crowded around her to hear him preach. In a voice taught as steel cables, as smooth as glass, he intoned, segregation is morally wrong and sinful. That's true, fired up. Audrey sat taller. It's an unjust law. An unjust law is no law at all, he proclaimed. And Audrey had listened to Mike explain his plan at her supper table and knew what he meant. If a law is unjust, disobey it. 
Sit down inside Newberry's. Picket those white stores. March to protest those unfair laws. Why, even marching was against the law. Then, get arrested. Fill the jails, Mike exclaimed. Fill Birmingham's jail so full that policemen can't squeeze in one more person. Pack cells so tight that police will have to quit arresting people for demanding their rights. Audrey just knew that Mike's plan would work. She twisted in her pew to see which grown-ups would walk down the aisle and volunteer for jail. They mostly stayed put, eyes staring at their feet, hands on their knees. Feet, hands, and knees didn't move. Fill the jails, Mike pleaded, meeting after meeting. But head shook all around her. Audrey heard, no, best not to break those segregation laws. Bossmen will fire me. Land will lord will evict me. Policemen will beat me. If nobody protested, Mike's plan would fail. Police could keep arresting anyone anytime for anything forever. Audrey would never be able to go places and do things like anyone else. One night, Jim announced a new idea. If grown-ups wouldn't do it, fill the jails with children. Audrey leapt to her feet. I want to go to jail, she declared. Mama looked deep and saw that Audrey's eyes begged, please. Okay, Mama said. Audrey started down the aisle. She was going to jail. Two mornings later, she put on a fresh pressed pinafore and shiny Mary Janes with turned down socks. Protesters got to look nice. In the meantime, her daddy bought her a game to help her pass the time in jail. Her mama and daddy took her by Center Street Elementary to tell her teacher she would be absent, maybe for a whole week. Miss Wells wrapped her arms around her. Audrey knew that she was proud of her. She said goodbye to her grandparents. You'll be fine, her grandmother said. She knew Audrey would be brave, and so did Audrey. Then her mama and daddy drove her to 16th Street Baptist Church, where the children were gathering. Even before she reached the door, Audrey heard loud voices chanting freedom songs. Inside, hundreds of big kids call out to friends and crowded around their school's signs for their high schools. Parker, Carver, her head swiveled. Where was the sign for Center Street Elementary? She was the only protester from her school, the youngest child in the whole crowd, and she knew no one. Audrey huddled by her parents in the basement. But when Jim lined her up with the others, two by two, and the door swung open, Audrey straightened up. She was going to break a law and go to jail to help things make right. Clutching a protest sign in one hand and her game in the other, Audrey marched out the door. She jumped and sang and stomped. Ain't gonna let nobody turn me round. Turn me round. Turn me round. Half a block from the church, a white policeman stopped Audrey. He pointed towards a police van. Sentence. One week in juvenile hall. A matron locked Audrey in a a day room with two dozen other girls, all older and bigger, all strangers. Audrey sat down alone and slipped the cover off her game. Told you, sit down, a matron yelled. Audrey jumped. She didn't remember standing up. The matron dragged her to a dark, empty room. I'll tell you something. When I tell you something, you do it or I'll leave you here, she demanded. Trembling, Audrey quietly followed the matron back to the day room, put away her game, and laid down her head and cried. Joe was harder than she thought, but she wasn't fine after all. By evening, Audrey was hungry and tired. For dinner, soup, oily, tasteless grits. At night, a bare mattress with one thin sheet for a cover. Audrey and her cellmates were let outdoors into an empty concrete pen surrounded by high prison walls. The older girls talked together. Audrey wondered what her classmates were doing. Mrs. Wills would be keeping them busy. On another day, Audrey was sent to a huge room and told to sit in a chair that was so high her feet dangled above the floor. Four white men glared at her. She'd never talked to a white man before. Are you against America? One demanded to know. No, sir, she answered politely. What do you talk about in those meetings? Another asked. Our freedom. Why did you march? To go places and do things like anyone else. What was wrong with that? Uh, 
Every mealtime, Audrey stared at greasy grits. She could barely spoon them in her mouth, let alone swallow them. Every night, the cot's wire springs jabbed. Every morning, she had nothing to do but sit alone with her game. In the afternoons, though, more kids crowded into the day room. Some days, many of them arrived sopping wet. A girl explained that firemen aimed powerful hoses at the children. Surging water spun them off their feet and down the street. They got up and kept marching anyway until they, too, were sent to jail. By Audrey's fifth day in detention, the police couldn't squeeze in one more room. We filled up all the rooms! We filled up all the rooms! Audrey practically jumped up and down. She was so proud. Watching television in the day room, she saw black people stroll straight into stores and restaurants like they belonged there. No one else could be sent to jail. Everything had changed. After seven days, Audrey went home. Her mama and daddy wrapped her arms tight around her and washed the jail off of her. And for dinner, hot rolls baptized in butter. Two months later, the city of Birmingham wiped segregation laws clean off the books. Audrey licked her spoon at Newberry's on the counter like everyone else, black and white together, like we belong. And then at the end of the book, there's an author's note which tells more facts. And here's a picture of the real Audrey. There's also a timeline which tells you when each of these things happened and um, a recipe for the hot buttered rolls that um, Audrey mentions in this book, as well as the sources where the author learned about this incredible person, Audrey Faye Hendricks. So now that we've read this book, I want you to ask yourself a few questions. Did you learn anything new today? Had you heard about Audrey Faye Hendricks before? Did you know that not very long ago, black people were not allowed to sit at the same lunch counters or go to the same stores or use the same water fountains as white people? In fact, I bet a lot of your grandparents were alive when this was happening. It's sad, but the important thing is that we have examples like Audrey Faye Hendricks for what to do. When there are laws that are not fair, like segregation, sometimes you have to break the laws to make a point that they are not fair. Audrey Faye Hendrickson sat down, or marched, and was sent to jail. But she didn't really do anything wrong. She wasn't hurting anyone, right? And it worked. They got their, some of their freedom in Birmingham by making those segregation laws so that they were no longer part of the law. You could no longer have that um, be true. So that was an excellent um, person to learn about, Audrey Faye Hendricks, the youngest marcher at the first Children's March. I hope that you enjoyed learning about her, and I hope that you'll join me the rest of this month to learn about other excellent Black heroes from our history. My name is Sarah Mari. I'm one of the librarians at Portland Public Library in Portland, Maine. Thank you for listening, and I'll see you again soon. Bye.